Hi, I'm Dr. Ryan Turner from Frontier Pediatrics. It's cold and flu season, and that means there are a lot of different things out there. Lots of families are concerned about RSV, strep, flu, croup, and just the common cold. Strep throat usually presents with fevers, sore throat, headaches, and maybe some stomach pain and vomiting. RSV can look like the common cold in many adults and older kids, but in our babies, we start to see runny nose, cough, and breathing difficulties that cause increased work of breathing for many of our infants. Where we get most concerned is kids tend to have runny noses and coughs. That's normal for a lot of the different ones, but especially in our babies where we're really looking at RSV is they start to breathe a lot harder than you would expect. You start to see them use extra muscles. So the muscles in between their ribs, their belly flares a little bit more. You see their throat, it starts to tug and pull a little bit more. That's what we call respiratory distress and that's when we wanna see babies. We also have influenza that's around at this time of year. Lots of people think that the flu is the stomach flu and they're throwing up all the time. But what we're actually talking about is the respiratory flu. It comes with fevers, cough, body aches and chills. Many people ask about COVID in kids and what to look for. It can run across the board. We see fevers in kids, we see runny nose, we see cough, we see vomiting, we see the whole gamut. And so COVID is one of the harder ones for us to pinpoint without actually coming in and getting tested for it. Croup is another illness that we see at this time. It's very concerning to parents because it'll come on very fast and it really hits kids at night. What you tend to see is cough, runny nose, but that cough changes at night where you end up getting much more of a barky sound to it and much more breathing difficulties when the kid has it. The other thing that we tend to see with croup is something called strider, where they take a deep breath in and they have a high-pitched sound like a <gasps> as they're breathing normally. The most common thing that we see during the winter is the common cold. It goes around, it's passed from person to person very easily, and most kids end up with just a runny nose and a slight cough. Your child has a fever. The biggest concern is what do I do with it and how do I treat it? For kids zero to six months old, we don't have many options. Our biggest one is Tylenol um, when it comes to medications. Medications change based on age and the only one that we really have at that time is Tylenol. Other ways that we can treat fevers for kids at that age would be lukewarm baths and making sure that they're just comfortable. For kids who are older than six months, you do have options between Tylenol and ibuprofen. Ibuprofen can't be used under six months old, but once we hit that threshold, both of them can be used to treat fever. The other symptoms that we look at with runny nose and cough are really hard to treat for different age groups. For our infants who are under a year old, our usual recommendations are nasal saline drops followed up by suction, whether that's bulb suction, electronic suction, or even the nose Frida option. Once your kids are over a year, here are the options that we have. For our older kids, nasal saline and suction doesn't work fantastic. It's near impossible to hold down a child who is that big, but we do have other options that the infants can't use. Things like Vicks Vapor Rub. For all kids, when it comes to runny nose and cough, you always can use a humidifier. Sore throats and babies are difficult because they can't come out and tell you. One of the signs that you might see is they would refuse food, especially more solid foods, and they might revert back to more of their liquid food. When it comes to sore throats, easiest treatment comes down to medication. Pain control through Tylenol and ibuprofen. Some other options could be, if they're older, you could gargle water. We can work on soft and cold foods, like applesauce from a fridge, popsicles. Then as the pain improves, we can advance their diet as tolerated. With all of our illnesses, the biggest thing that we see is that kids don't wanna eat as much. And so we really need to focus on hydration. The best options, water and Pedialyte. One of the other treatments for croup that we can use is cold air. We see it best in the winter time if we wrap kids up in a nice warm blanket and we take them outside to breathe that nice cold air for about five to 10 minutes. How do you know when to bring your child in? My biggest concern comes down to, can we handle this at home or do we feel overwhelmed by the symptoms? One of the biggest thing that we see is breathing. 
If your child is using a lot of those accessory muscles that we talked about, they look like they're working really hard, they don't want to eat because they're extra tired, bring them in, we would love to see them. Fever can be a tricky subject of when to bring a kid in. Fevers usually last with our viruses about two to three days. If your child is fevering longer than that, it might be something other than the virus and we would like to see them. Lots of parents worry about how high the temperature gets or how fast it goes up. That isn't a problem. I can tell you from experience, if you go into the ER with 104 fever, the first thing that they're gonna do for your child is give them Tylenol or Ibuprofen. That's what we recommend you doing at first to see if that fever will break and come down on its own. For our school-age kids or daycare, the biggest concern that parents have as we're getting better is when can my child go back to school or daycare? Most of the policies say 24 hours fever-free, the kid can come back to school, but it also depends on how the child looks. That fever might break, but they still might be dealing with a lot of cough and wheezing that might not allow them to return.